Hello everybody and welcome back to the Jake Saucy Stuff channel and we're back with the Mini Talon Nano Pro V2, whatever the fuck it's called. And we're looking at the arse end of it. I did say that I was going to not put the motor on until the very end, but I've decided in order for me to work out where wires and stuff need to go on the inside, I'm going to remove it. Or I'm going to put it on so we can work that out. So what I've done is I've installed the Predator... Yes, you're going to be able to sit. No, I don't think so. Uh, but it's one of the FMS Predator ESCs. I've pushed the wires out the front. I'm going to connect them up just as per the colours, really, and then screw it on. Um, I do have both push and pull ESCs, uh, not ESCs, propellers. So it doesn't matter which way around I connect these up. I'll just put on the correct propeller to make it go forward. Now, the motor itself, I have mentioned this before, but it did come with like a sort of. Um, I don't know what, what you'd really call them, but they're like a washer with like a grub screw in that goes on the end to keep the shaft from pulling out. I'll be honest with you and say if you're having this in a tractor configuration, so either on a, on like a twin or just on an old plane with the motors at the front, you probably want to keep that on. But because this is in tractor mode, I don't see it really being a problem. So I'm going to take the risk and I've taken it off and I'm going to install it without so that I don't have to try and dig out this hole because it will just be a, I think that would be more of a disaster than what's going to happen with this motor so I'm going to connect these up get it screwed on and I'll show you afterwards just because having it on this stand like this I have no proper way of showing you how to do that and everyone's watched everyone screwing a thing before so um yeah we'll uh, do that now and I'll get back to your short layer okay so I've got the motor installed all the way up I've pulled the speed controller back you can now sort of see roughly where it's going to end up and you can see the one i've got installed there is the predator esc from fms uh, it came with all the connectors on it which is quite nice that's fallen off and i'll put it back in a moment so what i'm now trying to work out is very important that you do this on planes especially fpv planes is all of the stuff that's transmitting and receiving where are they going to go so i have the transmitter which came in this massive gold box i've taken it out of you've got the gps so that transmits that transmits and receives and this receives because this is the easy HF receiver I'm going to use. Now, you might be thinking, are you going to put anything in the wings? And the answer to that is no, for two reasons. One, I want to build this very similar to my original Mini Talon. That doesn't have anything in the wings because A, the wings were very thin. And B, when I built it, I wanted it to be something nice and easy that you could just slip the wings on and fly. And having to mess about with loads of different connectors was going to be a pain in the arse. And that plane has been very successful in the way that it is set up. Um, and secondly, there's nothing built into the wings of the Mini Talon Pro, Talon Pro, whatever it's called. Um, if they had done, maybe I would have done. It's like, a, this is an improvement, let's give it a go. Um, but no, um, they haven't done that, so I'd have to dig holes and root cables, and it would just be a bloody nightmare. So, the first thing to think about is, are any of these directional, or are they omnidirectional? So omnidirectional is where they sort of come out in a circle, and the, one, and the directional ones are where they sort of fire better in one direction than the other. Now, one of these is directional, sort of, and the others are omnidirectional. This one. So this, this V antenna, the signal coming out the front of this is a lot stronger than what's coming out of the back. Which is why normally you're facing forward like it is now. So I'll put it on the plane like that. The only reason you have it that way is because when you're heading away from yourself, if you're doing long distance, which you are not, of course, because you're a good boy, um... When you then turn around to come home, you actually get the better signal. As opposed to going away, if you had it this way around, you would go away, and then on the way back, um, you, 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 as you turn around, you suddenly end up on more signal. Some people have installed them on servos that spin it round, but you know what? No. <laughs> so, um, and then we have these two, which are omnidirectional. Now, that means that it would be fairly silly if I installed that, say, at the back of the Talon, it's then blasting most of its signal directly over everything else that's in the plane. Um, and I have had issues in the past where this has caused me to not have GPS, um, which is around some of our quads, where everything's kind of close because it's in the middle centre frame. These are normally mounted on sticks sticking up at the top to get it away from everything. Um, so... We want these as far apart as possible, and with that at the front. Now, what I have on here at the moment is a Dell um, USB Type-C to USB and HDMI converter for my dad's laptop. That is signifying a Runcam 4, because it's roughly Runcam 4, Runcam 2, possibly 4K. I need to 
now that I'm in stock and trying to get stuff from Banggood at the minute is massively delayed, so I kind of want to get it from the UK, but everywhere in the UK is out of stock. <gasps> So run camera's gonna, run camera 2 is going to go up there and from over the top of this other camera. I did consider a split, but meh. Hard to get hold of them as well. And just meh, for whatever reason. Um, so what I was thinking of putting the video transmitter is directly behind the camera. Because on the original Talon, I have the camera there and the, the um, video transmitter is like directly behind it. Because um, I have the camera actually on a wing. Uh, you've probably seen some videos of that in the past. Not the biggest fan of the on the wing stuff because I'm a bit scared of it coming off. And also you kind of see the, the plane in the way. Fingers crossed with a run cam there. You're not really going to see that much. Um, so yeah, that would go there. I'm thinking this would go right at the back between the two. It would go around square, but it's being a pain. Behind it. Uh, right, apologies for the stop there um i basically have everything laid out how i was going to do it so gps to the back here i can move that slightly further back if i wanted to but further forward i keep it the more foam we've got for strength for the, excuse me for the v-tails this is roughly where i was thinking the receiver would go transmitter for the video and then this dell thing as i said before is for a run cam 2 or 2 4k which i haven't got yet and to be honest with you, I was looking at this section and went, I don't like this. I don't like this at all. What I'd prefer to do, if possible, is have this this way around. So this antenna is further forward. That's more or less not really changed position if you look at it. The uh, whoops, vertical one is right. This one just moved further towards um, the center line. I've dropped this video transmitter so many times now that if it works, I will be amazed. And it is a tribute to whoever builds these that it does still work. But then, of course, that's very close to this and not good. So I've made a drastic decision. Goodbye. That's going to go here. And I am looking at buying a hybrid camera. So the hybrid cameras, if you don't know, are sort of two cameras mounted on top of each other. One's FPV, one's video. I was looking at a run cam split three or four, but I then saw a video on the FPV video went, yeah, um, especially compared to the hybrids, which as I say are the ones with the two different lenses. And there's two different types. You've got the Cadex Tazio V2 and the run cam hybrid. And also that's quite important is they are actually both in stock in the UK, two different companies. Um, flight one from Flying Tech, one from Runcam. I will check the prices before I order, so I'm going to order from these places, but this is what I'm doing. Um, the problem, so I looked into video reviews of both of them, and unfortunately they are both um, better in different ways. So for example, the Cadex is very good FPV feed um, compared to the Runcam, whereas the Runcam has better HD video. Um, these are both capable of 4K 30fps or 2.7K 60 I'd probably run it on 2.7K 60, both for 60 FPS, which is more important to me than resolution, as well as the fact that um, my computer upstairs and this one as well, really, to be honest with you, probably struggle a little bit with uh, the 4K. But, um, so yeah, the FPV better on this, but the HD footage is better on this. I've ultimately decided to go with the Cadex, both because I think I'm gonna get more use out of the FPV camera side of it, you know, I'm not going to show every video I ever do on this on there. I'm not bothered about the two stacked PCB boards compared to the one of the run cam because this isn't going in a mini quad. And again, that's another problem with this. A lot of this stuff is filmed in mini quads and not in something that's going to be, you know, soaring about just looking at things. This does also mean, of course, that it can be on the pan and tilt or at least on the pan. I don't really do tilt because usually once I've said it, that's it. Um... It should still fit where the servo is now, fingers crossed. Um, and also, when I say that the HD footage is better on the run cam, it's just more colourful and it's more overexposed on the run cam. If I wanted to, I could make the Cadex more overexposed. And also the Cadex, while it's less of a spectacle to look at, probably looks more like real life. Um, so I'm going to go for the Cadex and double check. If there's nowhere cheaper, I will buy it from... May I just come back? From... Flying Tech, um, I've bought from them before, and uh, yeah, so that's going to replace 
this camera. This is going to move further forward. This is going to be rotated around so the antennas are further forward. And then we've got this here to create more spacing. And overall, I think better. Um, the Swifts are great, but again, no FPV recording. Um, so yes, that's what we're going to do. So with that in mind, I'm going to get that ordered. Another thing that I have ordered is a proper V antenna. These Hobby King ones are not brilliant. And also this one is the wrong polarization, not polarization, but like basically it's a female and a female. When I need a female and a male to make it a baby um, of signals, I guess. So I've ordered one of these already. Let's say the nine pound, 19, like two pound 60 postage. So 12 pound 50 UK company made in the UK as well. Um, and I'm gonna double check all the places and actually order this Cadex Tazia V2 for this plane. Um, and then with that, we can carry on with fitting all of the other things and go from there. Okay, so I have ended up ordering that Cadex from Flying Tech. I also ordered a notch filter for um, a special frequency and the frequency used with the R9 and the TBS stuff. And unfortunately, it is a TBS notch filter and I don't like TBS and try not to buy their products but never mind. What I'm looking at now to basically end the video is where we're gonna put stuff in this fuselage. And I can tell that some people are already gonna go, meh, that board is the wrong way around and not on center. Well, the board can be swapped around in the software, that's fine. And also, it's an inch to the right of center. You know, looking at roughly where the CFG is. So it's not gonna cause a massive problem, calm down. I'm imagining it this way around. So as I say, the antennas can be as further forward as possible. This one is just going to go out the side there. This one could come straight out the top. I'll put a little hole in the canopy with a little bit of blue tube for it to slot through. And uh, everything will be happy as Larry. Don't you panic. Um, and those cables will run into the receiver here. A throttle that can go straight into the receiver. Um, current sensor can go in here somewhere. It's all going to be neat and excellent and excellent everybody so happy times for all involved um so yes i'm going to probably leave it here but um we have how it's going to be set down so i can refer to this later i might even take a picture for a rough idea um but yes and then that can go up there our video transmitter with my fancy antenna can go up here and the new Cadex camera will come soon. Something I'm probably going to do with the Cadex camera is cut a hole here for the cable to go through, but make it quite big. So it can also be used as a bit of an air hole to get air in over the battery. Uh, there isn't much of an escape route. So I may have to put some in, because it's got air in here. But again, there's nowhere, there's nowhere for the air to go. Well, well there's a little bit, I guess. Um, but also, the speed control is like here, so it's not much uh, use. So, yeah, I'm going to put the, because the board's probably going to be mounted somewhere in this front section here. I don't really know. I need to know how much cable's there before I organise that. I know there's 3D printed things that you can screw it into and then sort of Velcro it in down the front there somewhere. Um, but yes, excellentness is closer to being achieved. I'm not gluing these in basically until I need to test the, the V-tails. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully it wasn't too shite. And uh, I will see you all in a future episode of doing stuff on this aeroplane. So thank you for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.